it. This is the award-winning In Wheel Time Car Show, your weekly go-to all things automotive place. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeffrey Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us today. And we have one of our favorite fans, one of our favorite go-to people, Mr. Andy Lilienthal, and are, are you, uh, look at you today, looking all sharp and everything with the blue glasses, I like it. And not only that, but you're also, uh, looks like you're indoors today. Today I am indoors. It is a soggy, cold, nasty morning outside here in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, good for you. To go with the virtual background. <laughs> so today. it's a normal day up there. <laughs> That's a, yes, we call this Saturday. Yes. <laughs> well, Andy, it's good to see you. Uh, where's your lovely wife? Uh, she is in the other room uh, having her morning coffee. Okay, good. Well, uh, we're, we're sorry that we're only seeing you. Give her our best, and uh, we, we're going to talk to you today. Because, you know, Andy does his own thing when it comes to off-roading. And just to kind of give it a little bump in here, uh, Andy, just to let everybody know that you're a little bit off the wall when it comes to your kind of off-roading and the vehicle you use, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, in <laughs> fact, the vehicle behind me here is uh, is my vehicle. So uh, that is a uh, that is a 1992 Mitsubishi Pajero. It's a little turbo diesel SUV. Uh, this one was actually uh, part of a photo shoot, part of the catalog for uh, my day job at Warren Industries. Do you work for Warren Industries? I do. Oh my God! I had no clue. Well, no wonder you're an off-road geek. <laughs> we love it. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, I have to tell you that I have never really been a, a, a true off-roader. I appreciate the whole sport of it and love to go. I've been on several adventures that uh, Jeep was kind enough to invite me to and uh, went to some really neat places high up on the mountains and, and did all of that and learned quite a bit from some of the people that were there that were true professionals. And I have always, always, always heard about Warren. Uh, and mainly the winches, because mm -hmm. apparently they are like the standard, the go-to place. Uh, certainly not the cheapest on, on earth, but they hold up and they do a fine job. Yeah, we have. Uh, we were the actually the company that pioneered the electric uh, vehicle-mounted winch in 1948. So uh, we uh, have been in business since then. Uh, we actually came out with the winches in uh, the late 50s, 1959. We came out with uh, our first vehicle-mounted winch. It was a 6,000-pound capacity unit. Uh, our history goes back to World War II Jeeps when those Jeeps were coming back from uh, the war. They were being sold to civilians while they were completely locked for four-wheel drive and not uh, they didn't drive the best. But uh, we came out with uh, uh, our hubs, our, our wheel hubs that allowed you basically to disconnect the, the four-wheel drive system from fully locked to make them a little more drivable, get a little bit better fuel economy. And then about nine, 10 years later, we uh, came out with the electric vehicle winch. And before then, everything was power takeoff or PTO. So it was driven off of the, off the Jeep's motor uh, or engine, I should say. And uh, the problem with that is, is uh, um, if any of you have ever driven off road or gotten a carbureted vehicle on a on a real steep angle, it'll go, get fuel starvation. So if you're in a real tricky predicament in a Jeep and uh, you can't start your engine, well, you also can't run your winch. So part of the selling point to the electric winch was doesn't matter what kind of terrain you're in, as long as you've got a battery, you have a, uh, the ability to recover yourself. How fascinating. I had no clue, and I certainly had no clue, that you guys did the locking and unlocking wheel hubs, too. Yep, that was our invention back in the, back in the 1940s. Do you still sell those? Absolutely, yep. So not only do we sell them for aftermarket uh, use, we have our premium and standard hubs. So like if you've, if you've got a, a Jeep CJ or an older Toyota or something like that, we definitely still make those, even uh, Ford Super Duties, right? We have our, uh, our line of Super Duty hubs. But um, for years and years, uh, and actually our, our sort of our cousin company uh, still has OE contracts making the uh, hubs for, for Ford. So um, without getting too far in, into the details, the, our companies, uh, we were one company, we divided into two. So one, one side uh, 
still does all the winches and all the aftermarket accessories and some OE applications. And then the other side of the business went off and does nothing but powertrain. That's called Warren Automotive. That's now a separate company from Warren Industries. But uh, we still have lots of OE business. We, we make winches for uh, Chrysler. I guess nowadays, uh, Cerebra, so, so I don't even can't remember how you say it. Stellantis. Stellantis. Cerebus. Stellantis, Andy. Sounds Thank cerebral. You. Stellantis. <laughs> Sounds yes. cerebral. And then, of course, Ford Motor Company. Uh, we also have OE stuff with a, a few other companies out there, Land Rover and and uh, and some others. But uh, uh, yeah, so we we make uh, we make a whole host of products. We're probably best known for our winches and hubs, but we've uh, we've been making bumpers for about forty years, and we even have all these uh, brand new innovations. Uh, one is called the Hub Receiver and App, and what that is is it's actually a way you can control that winch right here. Uh, <laughs> using your smartphone so you we have an app it doesn't show up but smartphone so you download the app you buy our you buy our, our remote that plugs into the winch and you can actually control your your winch with your with the bluetooth connection on your smartphone so you don't have to have a wire going from the remote control back to the truck anymore that's exactly right so <laughs> so when you cool. get so when you're yes. out there in four feet of mud trying to get your Jeep out of it, you can drop your phone in it, and then you'll never get out. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And we're also partnering with Apple and Samsung. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, well, you know, here's the deal, right? We hear that a lot. But I'll tell you what. Our corded remotes have a 12-foot lead. Okay, so you have 12 feet to go around the, around the vehicle when you're trying to use that winch. That hub gives enough. you a 100-foot uh, range. So you can be in the truck, you can be behind the truck, you can be way out of the mud and, uh, and still have, have that uh, ability to use the winch. And I will say this, um, you don't have to use it as the primary. So let's say you're out on the trail and, oh, you forgot your remote at home. Or let's say you, let's say you did drop your primary corded remote in the mud and you can't find it. Well, as long as you've got your smartphone and let's face it, who doesn't have their smartphone on them all the time? then you'll have a, at least a backup winch control. Might be the reason you're stuck in the mud because you were staring at your phone and not where you were driving. There you go. Yeah, eyes on the road, hands on the wheels, right? So so with worn winches, you guys actually make winches that are customizable to the brand. It's not like you have to buy a bumper that fits the winch. You guys have winches that fit the existing vehicle uh, line, correct? And they also make a bumper. Right. Yeah, we uh, so the way it works is our, our winches, our aftermarket winches are, are universal. So it depends on the bumper that you do choose. So uh, that being said, we also do make, uh, for instance, uh, on the on the Jeep uh, Wranglers and the Jeep uh, Gladiators, uh, if you get the factory OE um, steel bumper, you simply get our plate and you can bolt a winch into that factory right. bumper. We also manufacture the, the winch for the Dodge Power Wagon. We manufacture a winch for the Ford um, Super Duty with the Tremor package. So there are some OE components, sort of like Dana Axles, right? They, they supply Jeep. Well, we supply, we supply some companies directly too. But with regards to bumpers, we've actually made bumpers for about 40 years. Uh, but we've been increasing our bumper lineup more and more recently. So whether you have a Jeep, a full-size truck, a mid-size truck, we have a whole host of different applications uh, that allow you to mount a winch. And uh, in fact, we actually just came out with some uh, off-road bu bumpers that have that one-piece welded design, but don't take a winch. We found there's people who don't use a winch or don't need a winch, but they still want that off-road bumper for the extra frontal protection and the aggressive style too. Well, uh, yeah, because I was going to say, because that really makes your Jeep or whatever vehicle you're driving uh, more custom oh, uh, yeah. just mm -hmm. for you, whether you have a Absolutely. winch on the front of it. I wanted to ask you, what uh, is the largest winch that can pull the most that you offer? So the, we actually make winches ranging from 500 pounds all the way up to 30,000 pounds. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, so that 30,000 pound winch it is a behemoth. It's called our Series 30 XL. It's a hydraulic winch. It's oftentimes used in the uh, on a on a trailer to load, say, like a military vehicle or heavy uh, construction equipment or something like that. It's a real specialized unit. It's an absolute beast. The 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 thing weighs like 500 pounds. It's 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 incredible. 
but uh, uh, you know, Warren has contracts with the with military, so we we supply them, uh, and they they'll use it on some of their big big vehicles. You know, some of the uh, like the LMTV and some of that stuff. But uh, that's the biggest one. Our truck winches, which we which we sometimes call RV, which is recreational vehicle winches, those range from eight thousand pounds to sixteen and a half thousand pounds. So you've got your big F three fifty with big forty inch tires on it and uh, a lift kit and all that stuff, and you're slogging through the mud, you're going to want something that can uh, pull out that, that truck. And we have a real easy formula to describe or to um, help you choose a winch. And all you do is you take the vehicle's gross vehicle weight rating, so you can usually find that in the door jam or in the, in the owner's manual, you multiply that by 1.5, that'll get you your minimum pulling capacity. So if you've got a Jeep and it has a, a, a 5,000 or 5,500 pound capacity, you're looking just under 10,000 pounds. So you want to bump up to say a 10,000 pound winch for your pulling capacity. So as Warren has some OE connections, you're talking about uh, the other uh, the other side of Warren. How is Warren integrating into the EV platforms? Great, great question. Great question. It is definitely something we are aware of and something that we've been we've been researching and looking at. Uh, and uh, it's we're, we're going to be prepared when when those uh, vehicles start hitting the trail. You know, right now uh, we, we do see things like Rivian's coming out with stuff. We've got the Jeep with the, uh, the uh, you know, hybrid powertrain uh, and a whole bunch of, uh, even the Cybertruck, right, from Tesla. So uh, when and, those and things the, are- And the new Hummer is not too far away. Right, absolutely. And so when those vehicles come out, we're gonna make sure that we're, we're ready to go, that we're not scratching our head going, now oh, what? So you guys do have that, you're, you're in, the, in the door of the OE to see how you're going to be able to integrate. Our our partnerships with with OE do allow us, uh, good, good. you know, yeah. Yeah, access to engineers and such. Yeah, because yeah, I was kind of interested in how much draw your mm -hmm. winch is going to have when you're off road with an EV and you have range anxiety. <laughs> how much Dog. that range anxiety <laughs> accelerates yeah. if you got to winch your butt out of the mud. Right, and our winches, any any vehicle winch is going to have a high initial amp draw. Right. Actually, a high amp draw in general, just because it's a big electric motor, it's pulling big power from yeah. the batteries, and so on and so forth. So, uh, it's definitely something where our, our test lab and engineers and whatnot will be working on. Now, do you actually build the winches and, and all these components there at your office? So we have four hundred thousand square feet of manufacturing in Clackamas, Oregon. So. Uh, we build a whole host of things there. So winches, bumpers, so on and so forth. Um, all of our winches, with the exception of our VR Evo lineup, which is our standard duty kind of entry level, still a great little winch. Um, all of the winches have a final point of assembly of, of the United States. So uh, we build some components in-house. Raw steel comes in, finished goods come out. Some of the parts we do source, um, it's much like an automobile, right? So you get uh, you buy your Jeep and it's 75% uh, American components. Um, it's the same kind of deal with worn, with the worn winches where uh, we get parts from all over the world. We're not winding our own, our own motor armatures and whatnot in-house. It's just not something you can do. So um, we are cutting gears. You come to you come to Warren Industries facilities. You'll see us um, getting big uh, lengths of six foot long lengths of uh, uh, steel rod that we're cutting and shaping gears for our winches and and the drive uh, the drive shafts and the winches. Our our bumpers and mounting systems. Raw steel comes in, finished bumper comes out. So we're building those in the United States. Uh, we have a uh, uh, top quality welders. Absolutely fantastic, state-of-the-art powder coating in-house, stands up to 408-hour salt spray tests, all that stuff. So we're employing a, a lot of American workers, and we are uh, definitely the most American of the winch companies. So on, on top of that, does Warren offer end-user education? Because using a winch sounds easy enough, but boy, you better know what you're doing because you can hurt yourself or, or tear I, something up if you real don't. Real quick. Yeah, 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 absolutely. There is a thirst for knowledge out there, especially with the popularity of the of the Jeeps, uh, the truck market, uh, the whole uh, off-roading overlanding scene that's out there. People are really getting into this. And I can't tell you how many people come up to me, by the way, and say, listen, I've got your winch. I uh, hope I never have to use it. And I always <laughs> tell people, like, 
make sure you know how to use it yeah, when you need yeah, to know that, how to use it. So say. with re with regards to your question, uh, we do occasionally put on uh, winching clinics or winching demonstrations at at shows and events. I actually will be uh, headed to the Oregon coast in uh, uh, in February to teach a local uh, four wheel drive club uh, a winching basics class. So that's something we do several times a year. I do a lot of them. Uh, get out there and we start simple. Here's a winch. Here are the components. And then we'll go into the basics. Here's a single line pull. So a single line pull is going to be from the, just pulling the, the line out, rigging it up to an anchor point and pulling. And then you have more complex things, double line pulls and triple line pulls and angled uh, direction changes and so on and so forth, using a lot of our rigging accessories, things like um, snatch blocks, which is like a pulley block or um, uh, different kinds of shackles and straps and so on and so forth. So. It's something I always tell people, if you're gonna, if you're going to get a winch, make sure you know how to use it. Take it out, read the instruction manual, watch some videos. We've got a great video library on our Warren YouTube uh, channel. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind, that, that was kind of where I was going is mm -hmm. you have customers and everybody has access to YouTube and you guys do have a, uh, a channel to show people how to do a lot of this stuff. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but it's still, it's not like getting your hands on it. A couple of years ago, under supervision, I got to winch a power wagon up a hill. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I was, I mean, I've winched on boats. You know, I can run a winch. But sure. actually to tie it up and pull a power wagon up with a winch, I mean, that was a different ball game, trying to figure out how it was going to, the, the angles going up the rocks. You have to take all that. I mean, it was just a total different ball game. And. Fortunately, I had supervision, and I had somebody pointing me you saying, need "Here, supervision he, he on does everything. Need supervision. yeah, <laughs> yeah, do this before this power wagon rolls over on the back." You know, but, I will uh, say that you know when I first started at the co at the company, and I mean it was a lot of the people that work at Warren are into four wheel drive, myself included. Uh, but I was out on a photo shoot for our, our catalog at the time, the 2007 catalog. As the poster was, kid, <laughs> they had me driving the brand new SEMA ready. SEMA show ready, FJ Cruiser in the mud, and I was scared to death I was going to ruin it. And uh, But, you know, they had me at this crazy angle using the winch, and I remember I was standing on the brake with two feet going, God, I hope this thing holds. <laughs> and, of course, it did, and it pulled it up, you know, lickety-split. So Yeah, but it's always, you know, until you get your hands on it, it's just not quite the same. Yeah, everybody right? thinks, oh, that, that, that ought to be easy. Yeah, just take that cable and the button. Up. Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah, no, yeah, it, we know that that is not necessarily the case from what little experience I have in it. Well, on top of you want to make sure that you're environmentally friendly if you're out in the woods, that you're not wrapping the cable around a tree and hooking the cable to pull. You really want to bring some soft straps to wrap around the tree to pull yourself out so you don't damage the tree. There's a lot. That's a great a lot yeah. more to it. Plus, plus, you don't want to rip the oil pan off. Yeah. Well, right. there is that too. That that brings up a great point too. You know, we're we're a board member on Tread Lightly's, uh, the organization Tread Lightly. Right. Uh, we are definitely all about you know making sure we're not tearing up the tearing up the trails or anything like that. And uh, yeah, now, always use your tree strap. Don't wrap it around the tree because it'll it'll kill the tree and yeah. not good for your winch line either. Yeah, soft straps on your snatch block is the best. Yeah. Different subject. More Jeff. <laughs> we want. We all want more Jeff. He just kind of threw that out there. We're all going. What? 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 what, what we're, sometimes we. Jeff's way ahead of us here, and we have to kind of play catch up. So I want to talk to you uh, just briefly here about uh, the automotive side of what you guys do at Warren. Sure. In, in terms of like uh, events. Well, well or... no. What? 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 What is it that you make? You mentioned. Oh, it oh. Split off. Yeah. We make. We make a whole lot of things. So winches, hubs, bumpers, but in addition to that, we have a whole line of power sports products. So we have power sports winches, we have plows for ATVs, UTVs, we have soft goods, so bags and storage uh, equipment. Uh, we also have a whole line of industrial products, hoists and big winches like I, like I was telling you for that trailer. Um, it, the list goes on and on. So while a lot of people go, oh yeah, worn winches, you know, yeah. We definitely make winches, and it's always going to be our bread and butter. But we have a whole line of uh, all kinds of other products, utility products. We have these great little, great little products, two of which in particular. One is called Pulzall, P-U-L-L-Z-A-L-L. -L -L. And what that is, it's an electric come-along. So if you know what a come-along is, you know, yes. it's a ratchet. Yeah, they're, they're kind of a pain in the back, quite literally, after about 10 minutes. And uh, the Pulzall allows you to lift or pull, so it's a hoist or a winch, up to 1,000 pounds. 
uh, we have a corded and a cordless version. Uh, the other product that we have that came out about a year and a half ago, great product called Drill Winch. So it weighs about 14 pounds and you take your cordless drill and you chuck it into the side of this thing and you now have a 750 pound pulling tool. So you've got to move a pallet, a, a, I don't know, a crate engine. You got to move uh, gear driven. Uh, anything. What's that? Gear driven. Gear driven. We've got a bunch of gear reduction in there. So it doesn't matter which drill you use. If you've got a really, really fast drill, it's just going to mean the winch goes faster. But wow. We've got a, a lot of gear reduction in there. And then we also have a clutch on it. So you can turn that clutch and free spool your line out, hook it up, turn the clutch and start pulling. It also has a, uh, a cool. load holding, or excuse me, well, it does have a load holding brake, but it also has uh, a slipper clutch. So in other words, it's not going to allow you to overload that winch. It'll slip it so you don't grenade it. And where can we find all these products? So you can see them at warn.com. Uh, we have a dealer locator there as well. And then uh, lots of online retailers, lots of brick and mortar retailers as well. Well, Andy, I tell you what, this has been a real education. You can yeah, come on yeah. and, and teach us anytime that you'd like. If you got something new, anything. We love Great. talking to you, as you know, and uh, and uh, we we really appreciate the time you've taken to get up because we know it's early in Oregon. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's always worth it for you guys. Well, Thanks. thank you very much, and again, it's a real pleasure. And hope that you uh, stay safe up there. Be good. Let's stay in touch, and we we'll hope to talk to you soon. Will do. Thanks for having me. Thank you thank very you. much. I love talking to that guy. Oh yeah. Well, you learn something every time. His Mitsubishi Delica. Delica, yeah, yeah, the Delica. What, what was the other one? The pre Pajero. Pajero. We're going to talk about Pajero coming up here before long. Listen, I I, I don't wear those anymore. I used to, but. <laughs> Anyway, did you have feet in the drop bottom? No, I didn't have. Well, I guess at one point in my early life, I may have. I don't recall that, though. I'm sure Skelton's going to Photoshop a picture of you with bunny feet and a drop bottom. And, and your, my and mittens. mittens. And, and mittens. your mittens. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the stories making headlines this week. Cadillac dealers, Jeff, yes. will begin preparing their facilities for electric vehicles as early as next month. Yippee. About a year before the Lyric hits the market. The brand said in a letter to dealers on Wednesday, Cadillac is working with a company called ABM, a provider of electrification solutions to assess the upgrades and costs necessary for each dealer to sell and service EVs. I and, saw that lyric. It's a, it, to me, it's a sharp looking vehicle. It really is. Yeah. Yes, it is. And, and that is going to be in association with some Cadillac dealers folding and selling back their right. franchise to Cadillac because they don't want to in make that investment. Single franchise de uh, caddies. Right. Yeah. Um, Cadillac said uh, it has plans to have an all-electric lineup by 2030 as long as the market is ready. About a fifth of Cadillac's 882 dealerships chose to leave the brand late last year, opting to take a buyout offer rather than invest in EV infrastructure, which Cadillac expects to cost about Two hundred thousand dollars on average. That's actually not a lot. A yeah, lot. I wouldn't think that that would be that big. I, of a, I think a I'd hold back. on to the brand. No, but yeah, I would think, too. think of the you know Don Armstrong Cadillac in uh, you know El Campo. El Campo. Yeah, I don't sell a lot of Cadillacs there. Well, I wouldn't think it. Well, yeah, but still, that's. Uh, Boy, two hundred thousand dollars for a, a little guy. Yeah, nah, but that's a lot a of money. Cadillac yeah, store. How many? How many little guy Cadillac stores are there? Well, you put the franchise in that small town with the little guy Cadillac well, for a, a reason. Yeah, yeah. So it must have been probably well, inexpensive did, at the yeah, time. There's to not. Get it. There's not Cadillac in El Campo, but there well, is. I'm just a, saying, there is a little Cadillac town. in Victoria. Right. There is. Well, eight hundred and eighty-two of them said, "We'll take the cash and see you later." Mm -hmm. huh. uh, GMC Hummer-inspired SUV will race in off-road courses around the globe this year as part of GMC's new multi-year sponsorship with Chip Ganassi Racing. I want to see him do the Baja 1000. Chip Ganassi <laughs> Racing's electric SUV features a grill, graphics, and bodywork inspired by the Hummer EV pickup truck. It'll compete in the first Extreme E season, starting with a race in April. The Extreme E five-race global championship event will be held in Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Greenland, Brazil, and Argentina. Boy, talk about an expensive series. Ooh, and you know if Ganassi's in it. as bad as F1. If yeah. you know if Ganassi's in it, Penske's probably in it, too. The Extreme E races were designed in part to promote EV adoption, according to the state. Well, you know, they've had Formula E for a number of years they, now, yeah, where it's basically a Formula One car. And now they actually 
in the middle of the race, their pit stop is yep. changing cars. Right. They have full charge batteries. Carlos Gosen or Gone or whatever you, however you want to pronounce his last name. He's it's still at, in his hidey hole. He's in his hidey hole. <laughs> and his last name is spelled G H O S N. I call it Gosen. If, Gossin, if, I'm, Gossin? if I'm wrong, I don't care. Any relation to Frank? No, you're thinking of somebody else. You talking about the Joker? Yeah, yeah Gorshin. No. That's Gorshin. U.S. judge on Thursday rejected a last-ditch effort by two men to avoid being extradited to Japan to face charges. They helped former Nissan Motor Company chairman Carlos Gosen flee the country in the suitcase. They'll escape before they get there. <laughs> the ruling by U.S. District Judge <laughs> Indira Talwani in Boston cleared the way for U.S. Army Special Forces veteran Michael Taylor and his son Peter Taylor to be handed over to Japan after the U.S. State Department approved their extradition. Lawyers for the Taylors quickly moved to appeal. The Taylors were arrested in May at Japan's request. The judge put their extradition on hold on October the 29th so she could hear the challenge to the State Department's decision. Interesting. They'll escape. They'll, they'll get in another uh, luggage compartment somewhere. Yeah, but I would like to disappear. think that they, they got paid enough that I mean, there's special forces and stuff that they could disappeared already. Uh, well, apparently, apparently they, they didn't, didn't charge enough. Appar no, they didn't. And I, I guess they thought that they'd never get caught. Well, they could go join Epstein over on his island or something. Epstein's dead. Yeah, he's uh, dead. He's living on his private island that nobody can see. Yeah, they just think he's dead. He's not really. Okay. What? And <laughs> Ghislaine. You haven't heard anything about <laughs> Ghislaine Maxwell, who was his, uh, his uh, Jis partner. Ghislaine Maxwell. Ghislaine. Ghislaine? Yeah, it's called Ghislaine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You, you haven't heard anything about her because there's too many people. Actually, I did she read something about her. Not too long. A couple of days or A couple of days ago, ago that uh, apparently she's trying to get out of jail and said she didn't have nothing to do with it and she didn't know anything about it. She's looking for a suitcase. She's looking for a <laughs> yeah. Wasn't and she, two X on X Amazon looking for suitcases. <laughs> God, help us all. All right. Uh, we are going to wrap up today's show after a very quick break, and here it goes. Oh, my gosh. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, February 20th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone's invited. You will see Electric cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all at one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, tailpipes and tacos, Saturday, February 20th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the tailpipes and tacos Saturday morning cruise in february 20th 8 to 11 a.m at loopies and katie weather permitting well guess what that's it for this episode of the in wheel time car show hey when you're on facebook please give us a like tell your friends about us and share our junk with everybody you'll get conrad's unicorn hunting features which are always fun along with all things automotive all week long the in wheel time car show streams on facebook youtube twitch and on InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available on Pandora, Amazon, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, Google Podcast, and Podcast Addict. Special thanks to all of our guests today. The InWheel Time chief engineer is the fabulous David mm, Ainsley. Our video technical director, sales and marketing man, is Jeffrey Zekin. This week's InWheel Time car show is produced and directed by... Question mark in the Mysterians. For booking agent and podcast man, Mike out of this world Mars and his royalty King Conrad DeLong. I'm Don Armstrong saying so long for now. And we hope that you'll join us on the next live in wheel time car show next Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central Time right here on the Smoke and Mirrors Network. Don't, yes, don't forget to wear your mittens. I'm sorry I didn't have your microphone on. Thanks for being part of the In Wheel Time family. Mask up and stay healthy. And so long for now, everybody.